Let's welcome to the CJU Yieldify main stage, Senior Client Development Director from CJ, Stephen Coyle. Hey everyone, and welcome to Decoding Incrementality. Um, like the announcer mentioned, I'm Stephen Coyle. Um, I've been at CJ for about eight years, and during my time, I've experienced a lot of these conversations um, around questioning it and measuring it and really redefining success. So I'm super excited to um, talk to you guys today about this with the panel. Um, before CJ, I worked in a more um, integrated atmosphere. So I did paid search, paid social, um, SEO, and what attracted me to the channel um, ultimately was like, I thought, wow, we only commission when we have a sale. This is gonna be so easy to justify. <laughs> like, you know, I'm gonna knock it out the park after years of debating about impressions and clicks. I thought it would be so easy. And um, as you guys are all aware, it is not. Um, and so when I think about incrementality, I also think about my husband. Um, so I've been married for five years. We've been together for a very long time. Um, but he is also like a marketer's dream. Um, he is so influenced by stuff, it's <laughs> kind of crazy. Um, uh, two quick stories. Um, I'm a big Survivor fan, so if anybody's a Survivor fan, we can talk later. Um, and in the earlier seasons, they um, always did like this Outback Steakhouse reward. Um, and after like the third season of us watching um, um, like together, we took a trip to Outback um, in 2023, right? Um, who's like, who's going to Outback? Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we also um, watched the last season of Love is Blind and it's set in Seattle if you guys have seen it. And I will say they did a good job of making Seattle look very beautiful and very appealing. Um, and now the number, the, the number one next place that we are to visit is Seattle. Um, and so when I think about measuring incrementality, I think about him and the type of customer that he is. Um, like he's not loyal to any channel, he will buy online and store via his phone. Um, and like ultimately, like he's gonna buy a lot of stuff for this trip. Like we're gonna get a hotel, he's gonna buy outfits, we probably would go hiking because that's what you do in Washington State. Um, and so like when I think about incrementality and how we are to define like if we would've got that sale and these shopping journeys that were really triggered from reality TV, um, you know, it, it like reminds me that there is no answer, right? We are here to decode it, we're not here to solve the equation. Um, there's no silver bullet, um, so, you know, guard your expectations. But we, we, we have made a lot of strides with our technology and our ability to really look at the data um, and give us some directional value. Uh, so first, jump into how CJ really answers this. Um, luckily at CJ, we have a lot of uh, solutions that really give us those layers and uh, allow us, us to peel back and really look in depth. Um, so if you have an account team, I would definitely recommend you hit them up. My favorite one on this list is the elasticity um, analysis from a cashback perspective. That's really good in, um, insight. But with that, I will uh, jump into our panel and introduce our panelists. Um, so the panelists uh, we have today is Colin um, from CJ, uh, Director of Data Science. We have April from Ibotta. Um, Brian from LG and Jillian from Shutterfly. So help me welcome our great panelists to stage. Welcome, welcome everyone. Um, so our first section is really diving into defining incrementality. Um, so if you get five people on stage, you're gonna get five different definitions of what is incremental, um, right? So we, we really wanna dive into like, how do we handle those conversations, um, particularly at, um, with new leadership and new executives. So particularly Jillian, I know you have lots of experience with new leaders in a room and sort of crafting this conversation around incrementality. Can you talk to us about like how you go about that? Yeah, so one of the things, um Oh, I'm really loud, but, um, <laughs> and even before that is I was just talking to uh, my VP of like this word of nervous sighted. So I know we all just had like 
the keynote speaker, and it's just like, here's fear, here's fear here, and then here's this, what are you excited about? And uh, there's fear of standing here, sitting here, but there, I'm, what I'm excited about is talking about incrementality. It's something I'm super passionate about. We've, um, at Shutterfly, you know, we have had some transitions of, of CMOs, and that conversation is always different. And uh, um, I'm a mom of six. I became a grandmother yesterday during the keynote speaker, so it's really great. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that as we go into these conversations, you know, there's all, sometimes there's that mama bear. Like, we're trying to protect our channel. And the, all, the question's always, like, prove it. You know, what do you do? But then that conversation has continued to change. So now I walk in, I'm so excited. It's just like, we can now showcase, we have the analytics, we have the case studies, we have all of these really great things. So as we're talking about our channel, we're like, let's talk about this. And then just walking into it that way, it really does open up the conversation and it is a thought starter and a conversation piece. Absolutely. And then Brian, I know from your perspective at LG, you guys are newer to the DTC space. So how have you navigated defining what's incremental, especially when you have competition with retail partners that mm -hmm. sell your same products? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's definitely been a learning experience. It's been tricky for us over the couple of years we've been uh, live in the space. I mean, for me, it's, it started with um, education and, again, just understanding what, what, what the tactics are we're doing, what, how they're contributing to the business, um, being completely transparent internally um, and digging into, digging into those reports and the data to, like, take it a step further than, oh, it's, it's incremental, we know that, right? And ha having, having actual you know, average order values and, and conversion rates to like back that up um, so you have you know, the data at hand and ready to prepare to senior leadership when those questions inevitably come up. Yeah, because they're, they're definitely gonna come up, right? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> all the time. And then you know, data is uh, what, what powers a lot of what we do, especially at CJ. Um, so Colin, can you talk to us about our incrementality solutions and particularly how we're helping um, advertisers and publishers define what is incremental? Yeah, definitely. So here at CJ, we have a lot of different flavors of in incrementality trying to um, answer all those different questions. So what we're really trying to look at is the additional value that you get from affiliate, right? We're not looking at attribution or whether or um, not a sale would have occurred. But rather, we use a top-down approach um, to measure incrementality. As we said, you know, there's lots of different flavors of it. Um, so we look at the channel overall, so um, a representation of affiliate through CJ across different KPIs, like conversion rate, average order value, um, you know, revenue per customer, and the lift that we get from affiliate. From there, we go down into the program level. So that would be for an individual's program. What does their incrementality of affiliate look like? Um, from there, we can also look at the different partners within their program, different classifications, and break that all down into hol a holistic story. Um, from there, we also go deeper from that slide um, <laughs> in the beginning, right, where we're able to look at the different levers that we can pull within your program to measure incrementality of affiliate. So that could be, like you said, cash back, elasticity analysis to determine what's the optimal rate um, that you want to, that, you know, would give you to help you meet your goals. Um, also, we do campaign measurement, lifetime value, and a whole slew of other um, benchmarks and analysis that can help us to answer those questions and then build that full story. Perfect. And so what happens when it doesn't align, though? You know, we, so there's always that case of we want it this way, so what's our approach there? Yeah, I think when, when things don't align, um, we're always trying to build, like I said, that holistic story around it. And there's always going to be the situation in where you know, the definitions aren't going to align. And affiliate is so unique, right? It's different than the other channels. It, it's, um, it encompasses so much more than, say, you know, just display or, or another one. And we have to look at it in terms of not necessarily being programmatic, um, but you know, we have content, we have um, toolbar, and all these different things that need to be measured differently. So making sure that we know that it's being represented um, appropriately is really the key there. Nice. And then April, from the publisher standpoint, representation, as Colin just mentioned, is super important. So how do you guys align that definition of incrementality with your advertiser partners? Well, similar, similar to what Colin said, a lot of it is just kind of finding common grammar, common, uh, you know, a, a glossary of sorts, and making sure that how our clients measure incrementality, how they define incrementality, what are they specifically focused on? Because it's really turned into this buzzword over the last couple of years. Well, we really want to be incremental. Great. How? Do you want to see higher AOV? Do you want to see more new customers? Do you want to see specific types of customers? 
And you really have to do the work as a publisher asking questions to kind of tease out some of those answers because it's really easy to say, yeah, we're going to drive incrementality for you. But if you're looking for something different than what I can provide, then I'm not going to be helpful for you. And we're in a long-term partnership relationship business. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the, the perspective of the channel is forever changing, and we are a channel of channels, um, which really leads us into the concept of how do we shift these perceptions and really change the tone in the conversation. Um, Brian, you mentioned earlier, you know, taking an approach of educating um, your leadership. Um, so talk to us more about that. Like, when these questions come up, how do you curb those concepts? Yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I, I've put together many, many decks over the last couple of years, just like 101s and, you know, like fast facts and whatnot around what, what affiliate is, the types of tactics we're implementing, and just, again, making sure the business, like, understands affiliate is more than just a word, right? <laughs> like it's, it's like, it's different forms of media, it's different types of actions we're doing and many other types of channels, right? And um, just kind of putting the framework around like what it is, you know, a CPA is, what, what cash back is versus what a commission is, right? Like mm -hmm. these types of things. So it's not, it's not this like black box. It's like they get it and, and they understand it. I mean, there's, there's incrementality issues and concerns in every channel, right? It's not, it's not just affiliate. So right. like, it's not I'm making sure they understand what it is we're doing. Yeah, I feel like we're judged harshly, you know, more than so to other channels, uh, for sure. Um, and then I, I wanted to throw it back to April in terms of educating that value prop um, to your advertisers or even internally in terms of how to drive that strategy. Um, a lot of it boils down to what can I provide as a publisher, an audience? What are you looking for in audience? Um, where do those overlaps occur? But then also getting advertisers to think outside the box about what you can provide as a publisher too, because I'm a big advocate of there's plenty of sand in the sandbox for lots of different publishers, lots of different publisher types. There's so much, and I, I always encourage advertisers not to put all of their eggs in one basket, because if you're only spending money in content, that's early funnel. If you're only spending money in loyalty, that's late funnel. You need a balance all the way across. And then how are we measuring it at different points of the buying funnel? How are we measuring at different points of the selling funnel? How are you talking to your audience? And the more that we're just kind of on the same page with commonality in that conversation, the better we're going to do. And the hard part, similar to what Jillian said earlier, if you have a new CMO in a conversation, that conversation essentially starts over because a lot of times they'll come in with different ideas about what they want to see out of the program, what the goals are going to be. So you really kind of, you have to start those hard questions, but you have to repeat them every quarter, every year, every time you're talking about things, what's new? And it's easy to say, oh, well, I don't really know. We're just looking to grow sales. And, <laughs> but you know, sometimes we just have to put kind of a, a detective hat on as a publisher and not be afraid to ask those hard questions and really just kind of be, you know, a little bit of, I, I need this out of you so I can really come up with a great plan that's gonna meet your goals. Yeah, and even, you know, testing, yeah. and retesting, and doing that whole song and dance. I know, Jillian, you are a, a big fan of testing um, and looking beyond the data. So I know you took an approach of shifting perceptions at, um, at Shutterfly. Um, so talk to us about, like, the, the, the angles you took to really get them to start thinking about this conversation differently. Yeah, so when I look at our total affiliate program and I look at our publisher, the diversity across our publishers, each one of our publishers is unique and each of them is gonna reach a different target audience. And it's, we're gonna meet that user or that customer in that journey and that's where the perceptions start to change. And you know, so it's one of those things where yes, we can look at loyalty and there's, you know, there's some preconceived notions there, but the technology that our loyalty publishers hold and the way that we can lean in, not just new customer acquisition, that's amazing, but when we think about how are we trying to grow a certain category, how can we talk to that category? When we're talking to our influencers, how can we continue that brand voice that's really gonna make sense? And then layering it in even to our content. So each, when you look at them in a unique way, and they're all gonna drive their own different measurement sets. So yes, you know, what is the LTV? We did an elasticity test with a with a loyalty partner, we saw amazing incremental results. So it was a true test, and when the publishers are willing to do the test with you, just if the transparency needs to be there. When the brand is willing to be transparent, the publisher is willing to be transparent, it's like long-term growth. So you're like peeling back that layer for that future success. And that's where the perceptions change, not just in leadership, but then in that relationship they were having with those affiliate partners. Yeah. 
And you know, budget isn't unlimited, and sometimes going dark is unavoidable. Um, so I'm particularly curious from both of the advertisers. You know, your experience going dark with, within the channel, even if it was just to a, a silo degree, and what impact that had on your conversations around incrementality. We can start with you, Julie. Yeah, um, and we recently went through this. So sometimes there is, um, it's you know, with affiliate is an amazingly nimble and efficient channel. So sometimes when budgets are pulled back, you know, they, they'll be like, what can you do in the affiliate space? We cannot turn off our affiliate partners. It's devastating to, to have the impact that it has a share of voice and that ramp up period, it takes a long time. So there is long-term impacts, but we did have to, we did have to pull back at one point. And we saw immediate, immediate um, response to that. And that right there, again, it showcases incrementality in a way that I didn't mean to do this test, but look, I just did this and look at, look at the, what it results. And then they're like, let's turn it back on. But then when you turn it back on, I mean, it, it, there's, it took a little while. And then that also, it was, that was a test and learn opportunity. So, um, you know, don't always recommend it, but sometimes it's unavoidable. And uh, so sometimes you do have to make those shifts. And it's not just campaigns. When you're pulling back on CPAs, there's, there's, it's, there's all these different elements that's going to have a continuous effect when you do that. Absolutely. Same thing that, Brian. Yeah, I mean, we, we um, fortunately haven't been like completely dark in the sense where we've had no affiliate running in the short time we've been active. But I mean, we, ha we definitely have softer promotional periods and uh, periods during the year where budget is not as available as, as other times. And um, just by the nature of that, it, it, it has you know, given us an opportunity to kind of see the impact, um, not, not, not putting you know, media in the marketplace, not you know, optimizing commissions really has on, on the overall sales, not you know, for the LG.com as a whole. Um, you know, we, were, you know, we, had a, we had several months there over the summer where you know, promotions weren't as aggressive as, as prior months, and um, it impacted volume. Um, so, you know, we we clearly always have to be supporting the the, the yeah. you know the store with it. Absolutely, and I know Colin, you know, is probably itching and cringing at the concept of going dark. Um, so, what should we do? Um, you know, when going dark is maybe our only option, or um, you know, we have stuff like GA4 or media mix models that are making this conversation even more confusing and complicated. Yeah, so this is something that we talk about a lot in data science at CJ. Um, and obviously, we never recommend going dark because we want everything to be in a you know, testing environment where we can get statistically significant results. We can control the inputs and outputs. We're making sure we're controlling for things like seasonality, customer propensity to buy, um, and all of those things that within going dark can you know, n maybe not necessarily give you those results that you can have the confidence in. And it's great to see that you know, when that does happen, we often do see favorable results. Um, but you know, we do have all those other solutions that we can do that in a way where you know, we're not going to hurt relationships, we're not going to create a confusing um, customer experience, and then you know, we're able to say, hey, this was or was not statistically significant. Um, as far as GA4 um, and MMM, there's kind of a lot to unpack there. But obviously, GA4 had recent changes um, CJ did release a white paper on that on our website, so certainly check that out. Um, but with, with GA4, it doesn't necessarily hurt our ability to show publisher value, but rather it doesn't represent affiliate well within that model. So it's not a last click model, um, it's data driven attribution. So, and they also changed it from being four touch points to really like 50 touch points. Oh, wow. um, and with that, affiliate isn't picked up well. And it's not just unique to affiliate. It also really only measures uh, Google channels well. Um, so that's just something to consider there. With MMM, um, you know, similar, similarly, we, we have that conversation a lot, where we're not saying we shouldn't be testing you know, across the board for all your channels, because obviously, you know, we have to do that. right? We want to see how everyone is stacking up. But as we talked about before, you know, affiliate is different um, than some of the programmatic channels, right? right. So within an MMM model, um, affiliate is oftentimes not represented well due to um, maybe size. It doesn't pick up signal within that. But then also the fact that it doesn't, it, it doesn't work in a way where you can influx a lot of clicks or, or traffic in a way. Same thing was with going dark. You know, we have a lot of half-life content exists out there for a while. So really the key is with that is when you do have that situation in your company, when you're looking at that, ask for whether those results are statistically significant. So your p-value is what we're seeing better than random chance. We have seen where 
um, you know, consultancies will come in and we'll be looking at ROAS for the channel, affiliate will be represented, and it just doesn't make sense for what we see in other models. Right. Um, so that's just something to consider there and just making sure it's represented correctly. Absolutely. And April, as a publisher, you're the one being judged in these media mix models. We are. Um, so, like, what's the stance from that POV? Um, I mean, similar to what Colin said, it's, it's not really a fair measurement for affiliate most of the time because what a lot of the media mix models are looking at, they're looking for ingredients that are very different from the ingredients we usually use when we're measuring, um, you know, how well the channel is doing with an affiliate. Um, media mix models are very focused on impressions and we're very focused on clicks and orders and um, it's great that we're having discussions about path to purchase. This is a, a drum that I've been beating for a long time. Like, let's talk about lifetime value. Let's talk about these kind of things. Um, but judging affiliate on a media mix model is usually not necessarily a straightforward conversation. It's kind of like judging a fish by its ability to try climb trees. <laughs> yeah. um, because it's, it's just kind of, they're looking at different things than we normally measure. So, and then in relationship to like when clients go dark, you know, um, when we have that sort of a situation, trying to, you know, if it isn't a MMM situation, but it's just we need to measure the health of the channel, I always have the conversation, it's been coming up a lot more uh, consistently lately, that this is, I just want to warn you, this is an opportunity that your competitors might be coming in and they say, they see that you're going dark and they're going to go, ooh, this is my moment. And that's really that moment that they're going to come in and take market share from you. They're going to be aggressive. And um, I'm a student of marketing, I like to say. <laughs> and I had a boss in my 20s that told me, you know, if you think about marketing, it's like a hot air balloon. So you fill up the balloon, it takes a long time for that balloon to inflate. You get up in the air, and what happens when you shut off the gas? You fall, and it, and it happens really quickly. And it takes a long time for that hot air balloon to fill up again. So if you're thinking about, you know, having some down periods, some down tracking time to measure the incrementality in your program, Consider that as going to be a risk that you're going to be faced with. I love a metaphor. That was awesome. <laughs> I am the queen of metaphors, I will say. <laughs> um, anything else to add from Media Mix Model or um, GA4 or anything like that? Um, I mean, we've, we've actually talked to some of the Media Mix, mix Model agencies. Um, and, you know, if you, if you start going down that pathway, especially if you are really, you've been an affiliate for a long time, you really know what you're talking about, ask them the hard questions. If you're really looking to get, you know, what you need out of that, I know it's kind of the hot new thing that a lot of marketing programs are, are looking into now. Um, don't be afraid to say like, well, what are you going to look at for this? And how are you going to measure this? And really have an upfront conversation if you're exploring that, just to make sure, because um, I think we've all been in those situations where somebody who works in marketing, uh, I like to say this about SEO a lot. I know enough about SEO to be dangerous, but I would never consider myself an expert. <laughs> and usually people are like, that actually generally means you know more than you're, than you're giving yourself credit for. And I think it's the opposite sometimes when someone's trying to sell you something, and I'm saying this as a seller, um, you know, if, if they seem very confident, ask the hard questions because it'll crack open how much they know and how valuable that's going to be and actually measuring things in a very fair, level-headed way. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, which really brings us into like the next section, our last section, um, thinking beyond you know, decoding. So we have the definition, we've done the test, we have the data, we've shifted perceptions, and now what do we do, uh, right? This is an ever-evolving conversation. Um, so I would like to start with April again, that you were just talking. Um, but thinking about like the partner level, how do we proactively have these discussions and these tests before the question even comes up? Um, well, I've, I've been fortunate that I've worked for publishers that have a lot of different levers to pull, um, and specifically in audience targeting and elasticity tests. Um, I work for Ibotta now. We, have, we are sitting on a wealth of data when it comes to both in-store purchases as well as online purchases. Um, and the biggest thing is just I, I have to show the full menu of what I have available to me um, and, and remember to bring up things, take really go, good notes about the discussions that I'm having because, you know, if I, if I don't bring something to the conversation that I have in my wheelhouse, then I'm doing my advertisers as a service. So, um, you know, that's, the approach is generally just making sure that I'm planning out what I'm gonna say and that I'm showing everybody the full menu of what we should be testing into. 
Um, we've done a lot of elasticity tests to prove out, you know, what's, what's the right cashback rate? What's the right balance when it comes to promotional activity? Um, and I always encourage advertisers that, like, if you are working with a loyalty publisher, not everything is cashback. It is striking that good balance so that you're going to see ROAS, but you're also going to see that you're not hitting into your margins if you're going to some crazy cashback rates like 15, 20%. If you, if you need to blow it out of the water and have an Oprah moment during a, friend, during a friends and family <laughs> sale, okay, let's cross that bridge. But if you're also thinking about your margins and somebody's going to be screaming down your door because you're losing money on some of those sales, you know, let's talk about that balance of the promotion versus the reward. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we have a lot of tools at our disposal. Um, anything to lay around there, Colin? Yeah, I think, and I agree with all of that, certainly the testing environment, you know, trying lots of different things, really fleshing that all out, but having the right integration at CJ helps a lot too. So having universal tag, being able to run these incrementality tests, cross-channel journey, all of that. Um, but certainly don't let that stop you either, you know, because we do have other analyses like elasticity testing, which doesn't necessarily require that type um, of level or, you know, benchmarking, campaign measurement. Um, all of those different things that we can help with. Uh, you know, we also release a lot of thought leadership pieces and white papers on the website that you can also use to, to you know, bring back to your company and kind of tell that full story. Uh, never hesitate to reach out to your, your account team or data science. You know, we're always happy to consult on, on these types of questions. So yeah. that gets the whole team really excited. Absolutely. And um, you know, we all know affiliate is very public. We are a channel of channels. Um, so I'm curious, Brian, like how do you um, or what, like, what would your advice be to stay confident and up to date on all the nuances that relates to incrementality? Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's really about being my biggest critic and, um, you know, realizing, like, it's, you know, the, it's not the entire channel if something's not incremental. It might be, you know, a select tactic or a group of publishers and digging into that information and asking myself those tough questions before leadership that asks me those questions, right? I mean, we, it was important for us to partner with CJ starting last year to, to, to start doing like incrementality studies and starting to understand um, what's working and what's not, again, to get out ahead of those questions, right? To look at, look at the average order value, look at new to file, right? Like understand all of the data. So um, you're not just kind of in a meeting left to, to say, well, you know, trust me, you know, like, you yeah. know, it's not, it's not that type of situation. Absolutely. Anything there? Yeah, I think um, you know, with all that, everything you said was was <laughs> spot on. Um, so beyond looking at that, you know, I think one of the reports that I use the most often in these situations is cross-channel journey. Right? Um, we also have cross-channel journey with uh, channel detect. So even if that's not being passed, we can still see that um, path that the consumer took. Um, and with that, we're able to answer some of those harder questions. Right? You know, how many times was a publisher within a click path? How many times was it solo? Um, versus having you know Google or Facebook within there, and that can kind of dispel a lot of those myths of hey you know was this shopper um, going to convert to another channel, but then they came in at the end of affiliate. Uh, similarly, we can also see the duration or the the amount of days in between the first click with an affiliate to that sale in affiliate. You know, so they are shopping. Our consumers are are smart. They um, know what they're doing, and they're using affiliate to meet their needs. So I think being able to go to that next level or depth is crucial in, in telling that story of overall what's going on. Because it's not just saying, hey, affiliate's incremental. We know that we have these results. But it's also saying, if we look deeper, even when affiliate's just in the click path, you know, we're often seeing times that we have higher AOVs, we have conversion rates, even when it's not the converting channel. Yeah. And you know, diving deeper seems to be a theme, you know, going deeper in the KPIs. Um, you know, elevating your measurements and really redefining success. So, um, Jillian, I'm really uh, curious on how you approach that at Shutterfly, in particular with like post attribution and things like that. Post attribution, it's our favorite word. I know that we all we all <laughs> love to look at that platform versus post attribution. And some one of the things at Shutterfly that we it's, it's a motto that we use. It's like we zoom out, explore new angles, and own it. So it's like as we look at this channel and, you, and we're really zooming out, and it's not just affiliate, but it's cross functionally, and it's you know working with the promotional team and working with the, you know, PR team and influence, and what is our what is the overall goal of this channel, and that's that's the very first thing that we really need to think about, not just today, but in three years from now, long term, for the for to meet Q4. Q4 is, it's I feel like it's here, but it's just a couple of weeks away. We're all going to lose sleep here, but um, and then as we explore new angles, and it's. 
when we're exploring these angles, this is where those KPIs come in. And when we're, we're diving deeper into each of these sets and understanding, like personalization is key. We've been saying it for years. I remember before it was a buzzword, then it became the buzzword. And then it's like personalization with each of our partners. You know, and then how does that ladder up into the overall business goals? Like what, what gaps are we trying to fill? What, are, what new products are we trying to like lean into and talk to? Which publishers are gonna to meet those needs? And then we have the tools are finally available. I mean, I've, I've been in this space for 15 years. We begged for these tools. And it's not just the CJ, I mean, as it continues, and insights is my favorite thing right now. <laughs> I do see the, the, the tableau, please give us access to that on, on the advertising <laughs> side, because it's amazing. I wanna just dive deeper because there's just, it's, it's insight. That's what we what we all are craving for is that insight. As brands, we're continuing to evolve. We actually have those signals that we can finally see. And then same with on the affiliate side, they um, on the publisher side. Um, is that they also have that. So when we're all working together, it's really gonna create that puzzle that we can finally put together. So as we're doing, uh, testing is very hard in this space. We're having the willingness to do those tests. I hear Colin, I get super excited. I'm like, I didn't know that this was available. Um, but then, you know, as, as we do, I call them soft tests or experiments, what signal changed? And then that's gonna be that incremental signal that you can now talk to with the leadership or with the, the cross-functional teams. So, uh, um, and, I, and it, it's gonna change for every single publisher. They're not all gonna be the same. It is a not one size fit all. Autopilot is no longer something that's going to be in this. It's been gone for a while, yeah. and it's only gonna continue to evolve. So it's, um, again, look, looking across all of those KPIs, and it can be a category KPI. Like, how am I gonna grow this category? That's my KPI for this partner. You know, what is the LTV that's gonna take, I mean, something, we did elasticity test a year ago, and then how did, how did that change the consumer today? or in the touch points along, like bringing our brand and the, and the creative and the messaging, how did it change that buyer? So it's just like looking at those signals and then that's what's really gonna show the value of this channel. And then that's when your VP and CMO is gonna keep giving you money. They're, gonna say, <laughs> they're gonna say, here, we finally see it, please take it because this is where we're gonna continue to exceed our goals. And then that's where it's gonna bring the excitement of this channel. And that's what we're saying, I mean, that's what, you know. I'll do okay. a raw route that we're doing. But having an amazing team as well, you know, and, and that's where we talk about the own it piece, um, challenging your team, challenging yourself, celebrating the successes, and then taking those learning moments where something wasn't a success. And then what can we do that next time with our partners? So it just, it really becomes full circle. Yeah, absolutely. I hope that answered all of them. I know I'm missing. Yeah, There's no, always, always missing something in that, in that story. And we, and, we, and we tend to always you know, land back on value, right? It's, it's finding the value, decoding the value, if you will. Um, on the partner level, it's being super, like that's critically important, um, as you guys have said today. Um, so I am a man of action. Um, if anyone has worked with me, they've heard me say, you no know, insight is not insightful if it's not actionable. Um, so I would love everyone to be able to leave with some type of quick action that they can take back to their business um, and have these conversations or start the process of decoding. Um, so if you guys were to create a, a cheat sheet, um, what would be number one on your uh, cheat sheet for decoding incrementality? We can start with Colin. Yeah, I think for me, it's understanding how affiliate is represented. So no matter whether it's you're looking at an MMM model or a um, incrementality test at CJ, make sure that you understand the way that your data is being represented. Make sure it's in a clean testing environment, you're having uh, you know, statistically significant results, and that you're able to tell that full holistic picture of, of what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, I mean, for, for us, it's, um, it's, you know, it's important to constantly be testing new opportunities, and then again, you know, really doing post-mortems quickly on that, on those results, right? Understanding, again, understanding the data, understanding you know how the how the value of the uh, of the traffic is you know looks um, compared to everything else we're doing across the entire media channel. Um, looking at the lift, looking at the type of customers we're driving, right? I mean, it's for us, it's obviously heavily sales, but it's it's more than that. It's the quality of the traffic we're driving. You know, so um, you know, I think it's again, it's just it's digging into the data, not not feeling uncomfortable, looking at these tools on regular and asking questions. Um, you know, I mean, there's there's a lot of reports in there that I haven't, I'm stumbling upon every day. So um, that's that's been key for us. Sure. April? Uh, affiliate is not a vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not this thing that just exists in its own experience. It is a piece of the larger pie when it comes to your marketing budgets. 
um, and it should be treated as such. Uh, it, you know, it's not just affiliate, it's not just digital, it's not just programmatic, um, it's everything. You have to measure everything with kind of an even scale, but even as publishers, um, I think sometimes we get really reliant on our own tools. Don't be afraid to use the tools in CJ just like the advertisers do, um, you know? So understand that your data is not a vacuum, affiliate's not a vacuum, you gotta zoom, zoom out, as Jillian said, and look at the entire pie to really measure, you know, what am I doing and how can I be impactful? Absolutely. All of those things. Um, <laughs> no, but my other thing is like, stay curious. I mean, like that's just the one thing is just like, ask that additional question. Ask the additional question to your CJ team. Ask your additional to the publishers. You know, always be willing to be transparent yourself with this as much as you can. Um, and then it's just like, when, uh, we, when we're curious, that's where we're gonna find discoveries. So it's, um, and, and from different ways, stay curious with cross-functionally. You know, like how can we work together? When stay curious with creative, if we change this one thing, what would that do? And then, you know, even in promotional and just across, I mean, we are not a siloed channel. Everyone says we are siloed, but we are not. Because we are all working together and that's where, that's where we're gonna celebrate. So Absolutely. that would be nice. I think be curious is one of our themes at CJ this year. Yeah, right? absolutely. So, yeah. Um, channel channels, as we've been saying. Um, I would uh, throw in a fifth one, um, just so we have like a clean round number. Um, I forget where I heard this, um, but it was like an emotional intelligence type of training. Um, and the speaker was like, everything is up for renegotiation. Um, and that like reminds me of this and like when we are measuring and defining success, like it's okay that the results is not what you were looking for and finding the other value prop and redefining what success looks like on the partner level, on the channel level, um, for your business and for your um, efforts of incrementality and decoding that. Um, and we do have a QA, and a um, but I do wanna quickly thank the panel um, for all of your insight. I think um, there was a lot of great takeaways and we're gonna get to it. <laughs> Any questions? I think we have a microphone somewhere. I was like, there's gotta be questions, yes. The nope. oh, microphone's coming. <laughs> Yeah, attribution, I think, does play a pretty big role in incrementality. So I was just curious um, for those that are the brands, um, what attribution model do you use? Um, if it's internally uh, different from what you pay your partners externally, would be interested in that. And then I think for Ibotta, maybe what you see most common. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, for us, um, I mean, historically, it's it's been last touch, uh, but, um, just the experience we've had with affiliate over the last two years has really reignited those conversations and um, really challenged a lot of people to start looking at what what is the best you know form of attribution, what is the best model for us to understand. We we have countless systems that we report sales on, so there's also that right. It's not just GA, um, so it's you know it's constantly comparing results, comparing data. I mean, and I think just. By the nature of that, it we we do have that sort of chance to see like okay, like one channel shows this in sales, one channel shows it, you know, one 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 place shows this in sales. So it's it's tricky. I don't you know for us, it, last touch is the easiest has always been the easiest one to look at, but um, we're, we are hopefully evolving. Yeah, we don't, and I don't look at the last less touch. So we have a very dynamic internal um, attribution model, and I do look at my affiliates in a post-attribution ROAS way sometimes, you know, like where is the efficiency across um, our partners there? And then, uh, you know, we do the dynamic commissioning, you know, we're going to favor, you know, certain types of journeys, certain types of consumers. So, you know, I think as when you look at it holistically, you know, the way that it comes together, again, we are an extremely efficient channel. We have opportunities to do those tests and learns within those CPAs or just that, you know, um, but it is, I believe that it's its own magical, post-attribution is its own magical thing. And I think every brand is gonna be looking at that differently. And then how are we touching other channels and what is the value of those touches across that, that journey is how we're, we're looking at that in a holistic way. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, from the publisher standpoint, <laughs> uh, we, we look at, we obviously, obviously look 
at our own data, but then we also look at um, where are we impactful within looking at in CJ. We can see, you know, if we are if we need to have conversations about having a longer cookie window, things like that. Um, and and one conversation I've been having a lot lately. A lot of times when you're measuring the health of the budget that you're you know, allocating to a specific publisher, it's very much bottom funnel focused when you're talking to loyalty publishers. Because that's, I really need to see the ROAS, I really need to see bottom funnel movement, and that's great. And I understand that that's gonna be a really important conversation in getting budgets for next year, getting budgets for next quarter. Um, but we can also be impactful in early funnel things. Um, you know, and if you're not telling the story of why shop with your brand, especially if you're a brand that gets carried by other stores, by big box stores, by department stores. Um, you know, you, you need to do both things. You need to have the bottom funnel, but you also need to do the storytelling stuff. Um, you know, and explore with every publisher how you can do that. You know, ideally, do things in the same space, um, because then that's when you're really going to see the impact of your investment in that partnership. Any other questions? Any last thoughts from you guys? No? Well, thank you again. Thank you guys for joining us for this conversation. <laughs>